How's it going guys? Angus here from Makers Muse and today I have a very special guest here on the channel. So let me introduce you to Bruce Jackson from 3D Printing Systems. Welcome to the channel Bruce. Hey Angus, how's it going? It's going pretty good, pretty good. Uh, so basically the reason I have invited Bruce onto the channel today is to interview him about a new product that he's been working on for quite some time and it's very relevant to a lot of you in the 3D printing space. So just before I get into it, Bruce, what's your background with 3D printing? Where did you come from? Um, I'm, I'm from an IT background, a bit of a geek at heart, you know. I like gadgets and stuff like that. But I came into 3D printers about five and a half years ago, mm -hmm. uh, just before the hype. And uh, yeah, we've, we've sold loads of printers and 3D printers, 3D printing systems, you know, services Australia, New Zealand, mm -hmm. and uh, South Africa. Cool, cool. Because I remember the original up from five or so years ago. That was the first product you, first printer you sold. Yeah, 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 that's right. Yeah, so we've we've sold loads of those, and uh, you know, and we have to deal with uh, support and customer issues all day long. And uh, we, you know, you learn from this, and you learn from these issues that customers have all the time, mm -hmm. uh, from a, a new customer to a very experienced customer. Uh, on what frustrations they have with 3D printers, because yeah, there's a lot of variables and a lot of things that can go wrong. For sure, yeah, that's it. Like um, with, with FDM 3D printing on, on a consumer machine, with the filament, I mean, it, for a new person coming into 3D printing, as you said, there's so many different things that can happen. Uh, like for example, with like dust and I think moisture is becoming a really big relevant one these days. Not many people used to even consider that filament absorbs water from the air. I suppose the biggest one for me would be filament just plain running out <laughs> mid print. Yeah, I mean, it's a, you know, it's a silly mistake. Uh, I, I, I've done it so many times. I, it's just not real, I, you know, real. I, I look at a spool and go, yeah, that should get me through. And in sure. fact, I've got, a, I've got a shark on the floor over here who's half printed because you know, you ran out of material and it's, it's really frustrating and you, you slap yourself and you go, oh man, I wish I just had weighed the spool and checked and, you know, things like this. And yeah, and, and these are the issues that people have all the time. So we thought, well, how can we reduce these problems? Yeah, 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 absolutely. So yeah, I mean, that just segues into, I suppose, your inspiration for the bunker. So yeah, yeah how, how did so, it come to be? So about 18 months ago, I, I uh, met up with a friend who runs, looks after 34 printers for a university um, mm -hmm. in New Zealand. And a uh, guy said to me, you know, oh, you know, it's so, it's so frustrating with 3D printers because there's so many issues. But the thing is, he's got printers all over different campuses. So every morning, he's got to go walk to all the campuses, sure. check all the printers and it's a laborious thing. So he said, oh, Bruce, I wish that, you know, I wish you had something that was smarter that could, your printers could tell me, you know, when it's running out of material, when, when the printer stopped, which printers are available, which printers can I tell students to go to and print with? Yeah, you know, that's it. <laughs> uh, how do I, how do I monitor uh, student prints and, and things like this? So there's this whole thing around filament the, the big boys, you know, the patented uh, systems have all got these kind of features built in already. Sure, uh, like like sort of a cartridge that has a chip in it and controls yeah. it, but to a degree actually even limits you, I suppose, for those ones. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Trying, to, trying to get smarter <laughs> yeah. and complicated. You, yeah. know. you know who I'm talking about. I don't, I'm not going <laughs> to name names. <laughs> no, we're not going to name names. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But, but yeah, we do need to be smarter on, on how we print and... Uh, I mean, it's just, uh, um, yeah, just a thing that we need to do, yeah. Yeah, so in terms of the bunker, so it's a, essentially, what is it, a smart filament container or what would you, what would you describe it as? Um, yeah, I'd say it's a smart uh, filament cartridge mm -hmm. uh, that can work with any 3D printer, any FDM style 3D printer, mm -hmm. uh, with any type of filament, any third party, you know, so you're not locked into any material. Yeah. You're not locked into any printer because, you know, how many printers, I mean, you would know better than I do, how many printers are out on the market oh, that you know, it, sold every year? In, 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 in the sub, like, $1,000 space at the moment, there is probably hundreds. Um, and there's more more coming out every day. And I think the biggest issue with most of them is they don't have that basic level of filament control. It's just slapped on the back. 
you have little like spool holder that's exposed to dust and you know the elements moisture, moisture yeah. and yeah definitely no way of working out if it's running low for sure yeah yeah so so what we uh, so for 18 months now you know since that light bulb moment we've been mm. uh, you know thinking about this and and working really hard on developing a product that we think might might just you know take off mm. uh, and uh, inside it it's got Wi-Fi it's got um, a temperature humidity sensor because we want to monitor that sure it's got two stepper motors because we need to motorize the feed out of the the cartridge we, you know mm. we, and there's a reason for that so that we can calculate how much material is leaving so oh, we're cool. monitoring um, how much material? Uh, so two step. There's four limit switches to to monitor filament stages and and feeding. Like when you when the printer requests the material, you know mm -hmm. because filaments is all being pulled. Oh, yeah. So as soon as we pull it, it it just tugs on the filament and activates a limit switch, which then turns on the step motors and feeds the filament. So you're only feeding the right amount of filaments, not through a like a, a drag system where the the printer is trying to pull against a one or two kilo roll of filament. Yeah, so yeah. we've tried to reduce the amount of, of uh, you know, um, I don't know what's a, what the correct word is, weight or the amount of energy that's required to activate the limits, which yeah. we've reduced that dramatically. Uh, and, and obviously a little screen so you know, you can have a, just a quick look at it. It'll tell you uh, what the stage is of each, each uh, spool. So there's two mm -hmm. spools. Yep, okay. Um, so, you know, two independent spools, so uh, you can feed a, d a dual extrude if you want, or two separate um, 3D printers. Oh, so you can run two 3D printers off the same cartridge. Bunker, cut. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, That's cool. Yeah. And you can fit like one of those massive two kilo rolls if, if you like. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and we've got, um, you know, like a parametric uh, design on the spool core that mm -hmm. you can basically print out and it'll fit. You know, we've got 35, I think 37 different manufacturer spools. All, every spool is different just about. Sure, and, yeah, it is. And we've got these cores that fit into it. So you could turn the bunker upside down and the spool's not going to, you know, fall out or come loose. We also have a small ratchet system on this mm -hmm. so that so when you load a spool, it doesn't go unwinds and uh, <laughs> Excellent. does that. We've That's... got PTFT tube. Uh, running through the cartridge system, well, two lots of PTF tube mm -hmm. that uh, you load the filament in and feed it through. And then the smart stuff comes when we, uh, uh, you know, we've got the bunker app uh, and Android and Apple, okay. as well as a cloud uh, system to track your usage, tell you when you're getting low, tell you when you're getting empty, telling you when the humidity is high desiccants inside so you can put that in the microwave and recycle them cool, when you cool. get a desiccant warning you know when you get a moisture warning oh yeah 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 so, yeah. so walk us through that if you so say I, I have a new roll of filament from a manufacturer how do i go into loading into the bunker making sure it knows what it is and you know getting it i guess linked to my phone and my device Okay, so we've been talking to some of the big uh, players like Esun and Polymaker. Yeah, they're pretty big. Um, yep. yep. Uh, <laughs> pretty big, yeah. And um, so we've been talking to them. So we, we're getting uh, serialized barcodes put onto the spools. Okay. So to go back to your, your question is you grab a filament, you grab a roll of filament, you can either um, use your, your mobile app and zap the barcode on it, That'll load the spool into the, the bunker. Mm -hmm. uh, there's buttons. There's two buttons on the front of the bunker, so you nominate which which spool you're loading, left or right. Mm -hmm. You load that in. Bunker pulls down the data for this material, so it says it's red ABS. It's 1.75. Uh, best printing temperature is 220. Okay. Uh, printing speed is this, and and those that data we get from two sources. One from uh, the the supplier, the manufacturer, and two from any other bunker users who've shared their uh, best, you know, best yeah, use yeah. Because I think with some filaments, they work. Some will have slightly different parameters on some printers than others. So yeah, I mean, if if you like this this one for example, I've been trying around. Like, it took me three goes to get this right. It's sort of a semi flex filament, but if there was a like a place like you said, like on the app where people had already tried it on the printers I used and said, actually, you want to print, push your bed up to this temperature and you're, you're extruded to this temperature, it would have saved me three failed prints. 
Yeah, yeah. So just a community where people can go to and share share mm. you know settings. Because, and I guess, and I guess yeah. evaluate as well because some some filaments made better than others as well. So yeah, I guess they yeah. could they could do that too. And what like take a photo of their print and could they? Yeah. So okay. uh, you know because we know we know when the print finishes. Uh, well, we don't know if it's a fail or success, uh, but sure. when this print finishes, we send you a notification, uh, which you can turn on or off, and um, and then you can take a photograph of the print, of mm -hmm. either the success or the fail, because some fail photographs look pretty <laughs> so, cool. Yeah, so they do sometimes. <laughs> yeah, um, and, and then you can like report that issue, you know, what do you think it was? Do you think it was a user, you know, user issue? Do you think it was platform not level, nozzle? Uh, moisture or dust, you know, filament diameter, and you can choose all other, you know, uh, things that we collect this data and then we can go, hey, you know what, this this particular printer, you know, this particular filament off eBay at $10 a spool is actually a really good one. <laughs> yeah, um, okay. <laughs> yeah. That'd be quite so, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and I guess what a lot of the a lot of people that watch my channel would be really interested in terms of people who like to make their own printers and hack them what's the hackability potential of the bunker like how can you what can you do with it yeah good point uh, okay so the pcb uh we're using an awesome little chip on there called the esp8266 i sure. think uh, any hackers uh, should check this chip out it's it's absolutely awesome mm. um uh, and yeah, we've got a whole lot of stuff on there. So hackability, it's completely open source on on the the schematics and the code on there. So if you want to hack that to the IF Triple T channel mm -hmm. and you get a Facebook, uh, you know, whatever when your filament's running out or when the printer finishes, you can do that. So know? that that's if that's if this then that. Com. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. yeah. Awesome, awesome. It's a really, stuff. really fun. Yeah. <laughs> and I think I, I just saw today they've actually expanded it, so you can now get support in app. You don't have to oh, run wow. the, um, the IF Triple T app to get the features or something like that. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. So, so yeah, yeah, they can make it pause their printer and send you a Facebook message or something like that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you could set up a camera and you know take a photograph of it. Um, so we're looking at uh, if if we can work with Astro Print um, and Octo Print, okay. uh, and then get the filament, you know, mileage uh, sucked into into Astro Print and Octo Print. So then you can see the oh, you know, when you do a print, how much red ABS have I got? Yeah, that's it. That'd be interesting. Yeah. And I guess also, in terms of just going back to that, like how much of this type of plastic do I have? If you take a if you take a cartridge out and then say it's a, like a bright green you only use now and then. And you put it back, Bunker will remember how much you had on that, that well, spool. Well, okay, so what we're trying to do is we're trying to get uh, filament manufacturers to serialize their, their spools. Yeah, okay. Because if we can serialize them, then you can track the usage. So when you pull out that yellow and you put it on the shelf for six months and you take it off and put it back in the bunker, mm. we want to be able to know that there was 234 grams on it. Um, so if we can get filament manufacturers to, you know, serialize the spools, then, you know, A+. plus. Yeah. Uh, but we will also have like a serialized sheet that people can just download and print on their laser printers uh, and put yeah. serial numbers on the spools as a, as a side measure until filament manufacturers catch on. Yeah, I suppose if you, if you're just managing a small amount of uh, cartridges, you could probably probably just do that yourself, and then yeah yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, there's two schools because there's you know your 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 regular maker who maybe doesn't need to manage uh, you know filament mileage and stuff like that, but there mm -hmm. is a big benefit to it because at least it'll tell you when you're getting low, it'll tell you when you're empty, and it'll also tell you when the printer stops. Yeah. That's it. So if you kicked off a print for 26 hours and you get a message two hours later saying your print has oh, stopped feeding. Yeah. yeah <laughs> we don't want to hear that. But, uh, yeah, uh, you know, if you set it up on the weekend and on a Friday you expect the print to be there on Monday, you open up the print and you go, oh. Yeah, you know. yeah. And you've got the, the PLA that's been boiling away for 20 hours. <laughs> so now you have a completely oh, clogged nozzle. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, we've yeah. all been there. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. Awesome. Yeah, so yeah, we put a put a bit of uh, try to put as much smarts into it as as we can. Um, at the end of the day, it's a filament cartridge that mm. uh, you know just tells you when 
you're running out when you're running low and and then there's all the stats you know we've got a dashboard which then tells you how many miles you've done your average job you know average oh, yeah. miles per job average print time per job and all the stats that that pile up from the data that we can collect from that yeah yeah because i know a lot of people that run sort of like on 3d hubs you know they, they try to they print on demand their, their desktop printers but you know to have that data and realize you know am i charging enough for my prints or you know am i losing money am i that, that's actually could be really interesting and valuable information i'd say yeah that's kind of actually thing. a good idea yeah 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 it's, uh yeah because there you could plug that you could probably plug the data from bunker into 3d hubs Hmm. and uh, people could, you know, 3D Hub customers could actually get a real-time feedback of their prints. They go, oh. <laughs> yeah, 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 it could be interesting. Prints failed. Oh, okay, well, you know, were the prints finished? Or Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's something to think about. <laughs> I mean, every 3D printer should have this. I mean, let's be honest, you know, every 3D printer should have these smarts built into, into their 3D printer, but they don't. And, sure. Uh, I, th I think... Reason yeah, the biggest issue it's been so far is to have a spool that has been serialized or RFID, it's become a, a proprietary system. Yeah. Whereas I think, what with the bunker, you can use it on any printer and any any cartridge. 1.75, 2.85, 3 mil rubber, you know, flexibles, PLAs. Yeah, flexibles, yeah. Yeah, ABS is nylons, you know, you're talking about drying, keeping filament dry, so it's got desiccants that are reusable. Send yeah. your notification when the humidity gets high. That's a huge thing, especially with nylons, because, you know, I've found, you know, a week later, <laughs> sometimes they print badly yeah. after, after getting them out of the box. I mean, the best tip I could give you for uh, drying, you know, keeping filament dry, if you're going to if you're going to pre-dry filament, mm. because you would have to do that for the bunker. We don't have a heater cartridge in it. Sure. So you'd really want to put dry filaments in it. Uh, but to, to dry it, your filaments, what I do is I preheat the oven, uh, you know, to the temperature required, depending on PLA or ABS or nylon. Mm. And then I'll wait for the temperature to um, get to the right spot. And then I put the filament in because if you put oh. filament into a into a uh, an oven that's warming up, it actually mm. goes over temperature and then comes back down, and this can really affect um, you know your filaments. So I've had spools do this. I <laughs> learned 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 the hard way. Yeah, that's a really good yeah. tip actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, cool. That's awesome. So so in terms of timeline for bunker, you launch it on Kickstarter. End of the month. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Kickstarter. Yeah, Very cool. So, and you've yeah. got a landing page up so people can register to check to register their interest and get a notification. Get best yeah. prices. Best, yep. Oh, yeah, best price. Really good pricing. Oh, yeah, you've got some early birds going. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Cool. Awesome. Well, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. I've covered everything. It sounds like, yeah, as you said, something that all printers really should have. Um, I'm certainly pretty keen to try out a beta unit if that's on the cards. Yeah, that's definitely. <laughs> awesome. You'll be the first. <laughs> Sounds good. Cool. Well, thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this interview with uh, Bruce from 3D Printing Systems on The Bunker, which will be on Kickstarter end of the month. I'm really going to be keen, keenly following along this product because, you know, running multiple printers, it's just one of those things. Just You remove all those variables, I suppose, from having to worry about them. And especially if you're running multiple machines, multiple spools, just one less thing to worry about it means less fails, in my opinion. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, guys, and want to see future 3D printing videos on Makers Muse, I'm doing a video every day this month in August uh, as part of Savvy Sexy Social Vlog Every Day in August. And you can hit the subscribe button, which will be Bruce is <laughs> pointing for me there because he's big on the screen. <laughs> Thank you very much. And I look forward to seeing you again very shortly here on Makers Muse. Catch you later, guys. Bye bye.